guys. I have my coworker Zay here. He's uh, one of our strength coaches here. Uh, I'm going to have him teach uh, about tempos in regards to how you would program it into an exercise, um, exercise program. So the reason why I think it's important to understand this is one, we understand how to write it within a program. So a lot of patients or athletes who come to us for, for post-op, they might cut down to once a week, you know, in the middle of rehab after six, seven months, insurance has cut them off or whatever it is, and they are stuck doing it on their own at home or at school. Um, so I think the reason why it's important is because when you write a program, let's say you do something simple like a goblet squat, right? You should always be thinking about how to change up tempo to um, basically elicit a different response into how you're challenging the muscle. We can't always be doing you know, the same one tempo down, one tempo up the entire time. Uh, eccentrics is a really important part of strength training, um, and that's what Zay's gonna go over today. Uh, so he's gonna go over how to teach the tempo and how he, how he writes it out in a program just so you guys can get an understanding of how to write it for your athletes, all right? And that's why I think this is important, that's why I brought him here, because um, he's kind of taught me a lot about how to write this programming as well. Uh, so I'm gonna pass it on to Zay, I'm gonna step out of the way, all right? Hey guys, my name is Zay West. Uh, as Doc previously mentioned, one of the strength and conditioning coaches here at Healthy Baller. And the purpose of my talk is to go through tempos. And this comes from a school of thought, mainly from the, the triphasic strength and conditioning model. Uh, it was popularized by Cal Dietz, who's a strength and conditioning coach at University of Minnesota. And what it refers to are three different types of portions within a lift. The eccentric, the isometric, and the concentric. And the reason why that's important is because each portion of the lift will give, uh, will elicit a different training adaptation for that particular athlete. We're gonna be incredibly more stronger on an eccentric portion than we are on a concentric portion. So what this looks like, let's just say we have athlete A here, and let's pretend that they're doing a goblet squat. This is their starting position, this is their bottom position, and this is their finishing position, as I try to illustrate with this athlete standing, squatting, and then standing again. So, if we go on the way down, that is represented as our eccentric portion. But once we're at the bottom, that is now our isometric portion. Our isometric means there's no change in joint angle. So if I hang out in this position for one second up to 10 seconds or even 30 seconds if I were doing a wall sit per se, that means that it's an isometric contraction. Uh, but if I go on the way back up from bottom to the finishing position, this is now a concentric, right? So if eccentric means the muscle is lengthening, isometric means there's no change in joint angle, which also means there's no change in muscular length, and concentric means the shortening of muscles. Here's how this gets broken down in terms of writing this out program-wise. So let's say you're programming a goblet squat as this is shown here, and you want an athlete to do three sets of six. How do you denote that on the program of what you want them to do tempo-wise? So the first number that you would write would always be the isometric. So let's say you wanted them to go three seconds on the way down. You would write three here. And let's say you wanted them to pause at the bottom for one second. You'd write that here. And let's say you wanted them to just explode up on, on to the finishing position you can either write zero or you can write X to denote that that's a, a portion that they might not need to worry about. So for the sake of the matter, we'll put zero. This last space is reserved for if you want them to do an isometric at the top. So if they're an athlete who tends to rush into reps consecutively, you might put a number there just to denote, I want you to pause for a brief second before going, or I want you to brace, or I want you to feel a certain thing, whatever, that, whatever it might be that they need to work on. But if that is irrelevant, then you don't need to worry about that last space. So it goes eccentric, isometric, concentric. All right, and this, is, and this will pertain for something like a goblet squat, per se. So eccentric on the way down, isometric on the bottom, concentric on the way up. Um, now what if you have a situation where all you want them to do is just worry about the eccentric portion? We could do this one or two ways. So. One way would be to still have your hash marks and just write one number, and the others will be denoted by X's. Another way could be you list the exercise sets and reps, and in the parentheses, you put three second eccentric. And that way they understand that there's not just one number of three. What does that number three mean? You could denote, I want three seconds on the way down, 
maybe I want two second pause at the bottom, maybe I want a tempo of two seconds on the way down, two seconds on the way down, and two seconds on the way up. You can play with it however you like, depending on the needs of your athlete, uh, where they are in regards to their recovery process, the rehab process, and whatever training adaptation you're looking to, to gain. Cool. So, uh, again, you know, it's super important to understand how to write that in, in regards to a program, just because, again, we do have a lot of athletes who are, whether it's financial, whether it's insurances, whatever it is, who need to scale back in regards to the visits. And at the end of the day, we don't want our athletes relying on us. You know, maybe we, you're dealing with a college athlete and they're, they're gone for the fall. And, you know, maybe they're not on the school team, but they still want to they want to be active. They want to play intramurals, whatever it is. And they still want to go to the gym to finish off the rehab. Um, a perfect example is a person, uh, a college athlete, or sorry, a college student who is seven months post-op and it is late August and they're getting ready to go back to school. You know, they, they're like, I don't really want to go back to PT. Can you just write me up a strength program? So this is a perfect example of when this would come into play about, again, making sure you're challenging the muscle in different ways. It can't just always be one second down, one second up. We need to work in eccentric, just like Zay said. Um, so just for, again, practicality for, for this example, uh, for, let's just use it, just because you can't see my legs, but for a, a bicep curl, all right? So for this three, uh, the way he wrote it earlier, so we're gonna go, you, earlier you had three, and then let's go zero. We'll go three, zero, and then. We'll go two for constant. Yeah, two, two for constant. Yeah. So for this example, right? So again, he said this one is eccentric. This is the ISO hold if there is one, and this is concentric. So for a bicep curl, right? It would be on the way down. One, two, three, no hold, and then one, two, back up. All right. And again, that these three numbers are very simple to write. And once they once they kind of understand the basic principles behind it, it's super easy for any athlete. I've been able to teach this to ninth grade kids before where they understand how I write, or write out a program. Um, sometimes they show up late and I need to finish, I need to have them finish the last 15 minutes of their lift and I'll just write it on the board. Um, again, this is very simple stuff that is really important for us to make sure that we educate to our athletes. I'm a big advocate for educating, I'm a big advocate for making sure that they understand how to do exercises properly. Um, so again, hopefully you guys found this helpful in regards to how to teach tempo uh, for exercises. Thank you for watching today's video. Please feel free to like and subscribe and share it on your social media platforms. If you're interested, I have started an ACL mastermind group, which is a growing library of content centered around ACL rehab. It has exercises ranging from immediate post-op to late stage sports specific movements and everything in between. It's a growing library and currently holds over 250 videos. There's content centered around assessments, movement breakdowns, exercise breakdowns, case studies, and a whole lot more. You also gain access to a private forum where you can engage with like-minded people, ask questions, share research articles, and share resources. If you're interested, please feel free to click the link below. Thank you for watching.